Good afternoon. Happy coffee time. It's coffee time for me. I encourage you to grab a cup and we can sit and talk together over coffee. Hey, I just want to thank you guys. I've heard from a number of you that you're really enjoying these Song of Songs video blog posts or vlog posts. And I'm really glad. I'm thrilled that you're connecting with this, this book that my heart really connects with. And I don't think I said it well enough um, as we began, but this book, this song, the song of all songs, is really our song. It's the song of the journey of our hearts into love with God and even with others. In this song, we can find a reference point for the journey of our hearts. I'm not going to call it a blueprint as if it's steps to follow so much as it will give you a reference point. We're going to see in the bride's life these significant times, these significant events, these changes and turnings, and we're going to go, oh, that's where I'm at. That's what's going on inside of me. Or, oh, that makes sense now. What was happening in my heart, it was this. And it really is an outline of the journey of the human heart into love with Jesus. And it starts with God singing the greatest song over us. It starts with us asking for more touches of his word on our hearts in a way that affects our entire lives. It starts with uh, him being poured out for us and us responding in, lo in love. It starts with him drawing us after him and us beginning to run together with him it starts in that secret place of his chambers where he brings us and it starts at this point that we discussed yesterday where we embrace the fact that we are both dark and lovely and when those two things come together in our heart there is an experience, a release of the love of God. It's Romans 5.8. God demonstrates his love toward us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So today, we find ourselves in chapter 1, verse 6, where she's beginning this journey, realizing she is black and lovely, dark and beautiful. In verse 6 she says, Do not stare at me because I am swarthy. That's not a word we use too much anymore. It means dark. Do not stare at me because I am dark, for the sun has burned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me caretaker of the vineyards, but I have not taken care of my own vineyard. Don't stare at me! Stop staring at me! Makes me nervous. Nobody likes to be stared at, you know? And here she is, apparently being stared at. Why? Apparently, because she is dark. And there is the element of the darkness of her heart. She's becoming aware of it. Oh, my heart is dark, and there's people in my life staring at me. Picking on me. Thinking, oh, wow, what's wrong with her? Have you ever felt that? Have you ever felt those eyes on you? People staring at you, wondering what's wrong with you? Why are you so dark? Why can't you just get with it? Why can't you just get better? Well, she's experiencing some of that. And she says, do not stare at me. Do not stare at me because I am dark. Well, on one hand, I hear her saying, I don't like being stared at. Don't look at the dark part of me. And then on the other hand, I hear her going, Don't stare at me because I'm dark. Don't focus on the darkness. Remember, we just went through, I am dark, but lovely. And perhaps she's saying, Don't stare at the dark. Don't stare at the darkness. What happens when we fix our eyes on darkness? Remember Jesus saying something about if we give our eyes to darkness, our whole being, our whole body will be filled with darkness. 
But if we give our eyes to light, to what is pure, what is beautiful, remember the Apostle saying, so set your mind on the things above. Remember the Apostle saying, whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is true, fix your mind on these things. Well, what about in people's lives? Should we stare at the darkness in their lives or should we fix our eyes on the good things? I'm going to leave that hang there. I'm just going to leave that hang there for you to, to process and think about. 